Hello YouTube. This is a um, video on the conversion of my eShops PF1000 uh, dual drain overflow box into a Herbie overflow box. And here you can see uh, uh, an image of it. And uh, let me bring the camera a little closer so you can see what I did. Okay, so the first thing is I took the uh, dual drains and I made this one into a, an emergency overflow drain. This one then becomes the primary drain and uh, I swapped out the, um, the bulkhead, the one inch bulkhead that comes with it with the one I had on my sump because it had a, a barb on the end. Uh, so what you want to do is be sure that the barb doesn't actually come up too high and that your overflow is I might need to make this a little bit longer so that uh, if for any reason this drain gets plugged up, this will fill up and it'll go into the emergency overflow. Now, the other thing that's key is that I put in a gate valve. I uh, looked at the uh, ball valves at the hardware store, and I tell you, with the one inch PVC, the ball valves were incredibly hard to turn, whereas the gate valve is very easy to turn and gives a much finer adjustment. So I decided to go with the gate valve. And what you want to do is close off the drain enough so that the water level in the box uh, comes up to about here and stays at that level. And that way you get a full siphon coming down the drain and it won't make any, there will be no uh, water vortex mixed with the air. And as a result, there should be no gurgling, okay? All right, so the other thing I did was I put in a union because, as you can see, I have filter floss in the uh, wet-dry filter that I'm going to need to clean out. And in order to get at that, <laughs> to remove the piping, I had to have a union in there so that I could uh, rotate it to the side and then pull it out. Otherwise, it would be incredibly difficult getting at the, uh, the filter floss. All right, so and so there's the overflow drain there. It comes down, and it goes into the box here. Now, I temporarily put in a pump uh, so I can test this out. So that's the next thing is to put in some water, get the siphon going, and uh, be sure nothing leaks, and then see what I need to do to adjust the ball valve on the drain so that uh, the water level is where I need it to be to not make any noise. So we'll break here and I'll put some water in the, in the sump and in the overflow box and we'll see how it goes. And I'll be back to you. All right, we're back. I have uh, put the water in the sump. I filled it up to the bottom of the uh, lip of the overflow to the drain compartment or the pump compartment. And as you can see, I've adjusted the the, ball, the uh, gate valve so that the water coming over the bulk over the uh, divider here is above the entrance to the drain pipe, and as a result, the drain makes no water, and the emergency overflow is here. All right, so I did notice, uh, I, I didn't use any gluing on any of the fittings because they were pretty tight. So we got a little bit of water here. I probably used some tape there. Got, we had a little bit of water here and down at the bottom there. So I'll probably have to use a little uh, tape there. If we look down here, we'll notice that there is some water coming out of the emergency tree drain periodically, maybe a, a small spurt every three, four seconds. I attribute that to one of a couple of things. Likely the PVC pipe in the bulkhead, which is just a pressure fit, is leaking a little bit. Uh, I don't think the gasket is leaking. I think it's just this is leaking a little bit, and so it drains a little bit through the emergency uh, drain every uh, once in a while. No big deal. It makes a little bit of noise. So the overflow is real quiet and even the uh, 
drip into the uh, the dispersion plate is quiet, but what's not quiet is the the drip from the uh, bio balls into the tank below it. So I'll be quiet for a minute so you can hear it. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that's the drip from the bio balls. So let me take the camera down for a minute. Get a little closer. You can hear it. I put this pump in temporarily just so I could see how how this all works. Here's the uh, trip here. I don't think that's making the noise. I think it's coming from the trip over the bio balls down into the uh, compartment down there. So it's not a lot of flow. You can see the flow here is just a little bit. I also wasn't sure how high to uh, to put the water in the sump. The pump seems to be uh, keeping it right at the the uh, bulkhead there. So we'll see uh, what I have to do next. What I have to do to make this quieter. I guess I really don't like the dripping sound at all. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to raise the water in the sump so that they don't drip from the from the plate that holds the bio balls up down into the compartment below it. Uh, let's see, I'll try a couple of things. I'm also curious as to, uh, I got a UPS on this system, so I'm not going to have a problem with power outages, but I'd just like to know if uh, I break the uh, if I break the suction on the overflow, how much water is going to drain into the tank and is it going to, because from the pump, and will the pump overflow the tank? I don't want that to happen. So there's definitely, I got two drain YouTube for drains. I did because I thought it would help minimize the possibility of the suction uh, or the siphon uh, breaking on the uh, tubes. Uh, but we'll see how to test a little bit. All right, that's it for now. All right, uh, made some additional adjustments. I fixed the leak, so it was pretty simple. I used uh, plumber's tape, half-inch plumber's tape around the threads here. That fixed that. I also used it around the PVC pipe straight. I thought I would give it a try. And that worked there. Also did it here. I think you can actually see the tape there. Did it there. And also did it uh, here and then here. And I uh, did it down here. So basically the plumber's tape fixed all of the leaks wherever it was happening. So it worked out pretty good. Also, you can see I removed the filter floss because it looked like it was preventing the uh, water from dripping over the whole plate. It kind of just dripped in the middle of the plate, and that was it. I also uh, changed out the pump. Uh, I think I originally had a, uh, a Rio 1400 in there, and this is a Rio 2100, so there's a lot more flow. Uh, and you can see that in the uh, in how much water is coming down the dr uh, down the uh, regular drain, and it now covers all of the drip plate instead of just the middle of the drip plate. So I don't know whether that was because there wasn't enough flow coming in, or whether it was a function of the way the uh, filter floss uh, inhibits the uh, the flow of the water. We'll see. I may uh, put it back in now that I got a stronger pump and see if if it's still all the way uh, doing the same uh, effect of just in the middle. 
it is, I'll have to leave it out. I did end up putting the filter floss in the uh, uh, the, the middle compartment, uh, and also put in some uh, crushed coral to help the pH. We'll see how that works out. Um, so now it works. It's working pretty good. The only thing next is I have to uh, plumb in the return. I've got it connected just with a, uh, a siphon hose, or uh, yeah, a hose. Um, and uh, I'm a little concerned because the hose stick in the tank a little bit, so if I have a power outage, uh, and I, ha I haven't hooked, it, hooked the pump, the return pump, yet into the UPS, it would drain a fair amount of water. I don't think it would drain more than what the sump can hold, uh, but also there's nothing... Uh, I don't want to suck up any fish. The fish are reasonably uh, bigger than the, I think it's a half inch hose. We'll see, but I still don't like that. So I got to plumb that in and uh, use some kind of uh, um, way to minimize how much it actually, uh, how deep it goes into the water in the tank uh, so that it doesn't uh, siphon too much back siphon in the event that uh, we've got a power outage and the UPS fails. I think it's pretty unlikely the UPS would fail. Uh, but the batteries do run out um, over time. And it's a long period of time, you know, like a year or a couple years. So, and it beeps when it, when it starts being overloaded, so I would know. So I don't think that's really an issue, but still uh, would be a good, good thing to do. Uh, so that's, that's next on the list doing the return the return pump uh, so that's probably tomorrow's project <laughs>